Hey everyone, back again with you. I'm going to do another video today on an overview and disassembly of this Mosin Nagan Model 44. And just give you some brief information on it right away. This one is a 1955 Romanian M44. It was made and uh, manufactured in Romania, I should say, by a manufacturer called Kugir. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's C U G I R. Uh, all the numbers match on this one, which uh, is the receiver, floor plate, and butt plate. It does not have a matching bolt. The bolt has been uh, um, electro penciled in with a new serial number, and the new serial number doesn't even match. So uh, the bolt has definitely been replaced. Uh, specifications of a Model 44, and this kind of, I think, cross goes over all of the. Um, all of the different Mosins out there from all the different countries but the weight is about nine pounds overall length is about forty inches barrel length is twenty and a quarter inches so pretty short barrel uh... stock length is about thirty six and a half inches groove diameter is point three one one inches sight radius is sixteen and a half inches and the cleaning rod that comes with it uh... the one that i have on here is a reproduction that's seventeen and a half inches uh, just a quick overview of what the M44 is. Uh, obviously the Model 44 is a variation of uh, the uh, Mosin Nagan uh, 9130. It's just a shortened version of it. Uh, but in 1943 what they did is they uh, made about a 50,000 of these carbines and it was done in the Soviet Army and they tested them out and it worked real well for them. Uh, so they adapted the M38 which I do have one of those as well and I'll do another video on that sometime in the future. Uh, the Model 44 came out after that and the only difference between the Model 38 and the Model 44 was that the Model 44 here has the side folding bayonet and I'll show you that here real quickly. As you can see it folds right into the side of the the weapon and you're able to pop it right out real nice and quick. So that was a real nice feature on these Model 44s that previous Mosines did not have. Uh, so obviously again it was a just a variation of the uh, older Mosin Nagans. Uh, arsenal dates, as I mentioned, this one is was manufactured at Kugir in Romania. Uh, they produced these at that uh, particular arsenal from 1953 to 1955. Really have no idea how many of these were produced at that particular arsenal. Uh, the Romanian ones, even though they were only made there for a couple of years, aren't particularly collectible. Uh, makes it a little bit more collectible when you have the original stocks on it like I have here. A lot of these stocks were refurbished or re-arsenaled to Model 38s, uh, older stocks. So uh, to have the original stock is nice. As you can see, this one is pretty beat up. It's definitely seen a lot of wear and, and use in its life. Uh, that's pretty much it for just the background on it of the uh, Mosin Nagant Model 44. What I'll do now is I'll go into kind of a, a disassembly real quickly for you. I know there's a lot of videos out there that already have a lot of disassembly instructions on this. Uh, so I'll do that real quickly and then uh, what we'll go ahead and do is take a look at the different markings that you'll find on on this particular variation uh, from Romania. Maybe that'll help some of you identify some of the markings that you'll have on some of your guns. So let's go ahead and break her down and see what we have. Alright guys, disassembly of this gun is fairly easy. I'll go just do it real quickly for you. As uh, Like I mentioned, there are a lot of other videos out there that show you how to do this more a little bit more in depth. Uh, but essentially what you want to do is go ahead and remove your bolt. What you can do is uh, pull your bolt to the rearward position, pull the trigger, and the bolt should slide right out. As you can see, I'll go ahead and set the bolt aside. I'll do a, another little quick video on how to disassemble that as well. Uh, from that point, what you can do uh, what I like to do first is remove the barrel bands at least. Uh, to remove the barrel bands on the Model 44 you'll actually need to flip out the bayonet so we can get to them. And these can be a little bit tight to get on and off. Um, I should mention that the only tool that you really need to use on this gun is the uh, little teardrop tool that comes with it. Otherwise just a, a flathead screwdriver will also do. You'll notice on these weapons most of them have these finger grooves on the left and right hand side which assist in getting the rear barrel band off uh, but otherwise you just need to depress these springs here uh, and push the uh, bands forward 
I'll go ahead and try to do that here. I hope I'm going to be able to get it on camera for you. And we'll get the rear one here. Rear one can be a little bit more difficult. It's a little bit tighter in the back. I'm going to have to set it up here. Sorry guys, you're not going to be able to see this. But it's pretty self-explanatory. If your barrel bands are really loose, that's never a good sign. It generally means with the recoil of the gun, you're going to have some issues with them flying around on you. Uh, once you have the barrel bands pushed forward, as you can see I have them here, make sure they're already all the way forward. At that point, your top hand guard should come right off. At that point, I do put the bayonet into the rearward position again. You don't really need it sticking out. Uh, at that point, what we can do is we'll flip the gun over. On the bottom side, normally you would have... Um, a screw here this gun didn't have one I did order one so hopefully it'll come soon uh, these screws are commonly lost uh, due to the recoil of a gun when you're shooting it it's always recommended that before you go to the range with these guns any Mosin the gun any, actually is that you tighten this screw as well as the screw on the top of the receiver here which is uh, where we're gonna go next with this so on the top of the receiver after you've unscrewed that bottom floor plate screw we'll go ahead and unscrew this guy You can pull that screw right out, nice long pin screw. At that point then you can flip the gun back over. You should be able to uh, remove the floor plate here. We'll go ahead and do that. The floor plate, you can actually remove the uh, elevator in here if you want to. You can open it up and then by depressing these two together, it'll actually remove itself from the magazine assembly. So that's pretty easy. I usually don't take that apart unless I'm doing a real deep cleaning and oiling, so that's probably not a step you really need to worry about. At that pen point, you'll notice that the whole magazine assembly is out. We'll just put the gun back up to the top, and we'll just pull off the whole receiver and barrel from the, the wood. Should remove. You always want to make sure you uh, See, the problem here I'm having is I skipped the step. I didn't remove the cleaning rod. Without the cleaning rod removed, the barrel bands cannot separate themselves. So now at this point, the whole assembly should come off. So you're left with the receiver, the barrel, the bayonet, and then just the stock. So pretty straightforward. I'll do a quick video here and show you how to disassemble the bolt. Alright guys, for the bolt disassembly, it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. There are a lot of other tutorials out there, so hopefully this one will help you. But if not, you know, feel free to jump out there and check some other ones out. Uh, but it, it's it's pretty straightforward, so I'll just kind of show you how to do it here. First thing you want to do is take your uh, a bolt and decock it. Um, and you can either do that by grabbing on the back and um, pulling to the left, having the whole uh, cocking knob just twisting to the left. Or, you know, you can grab it like this and, and pull the whole knob to the right. Pretty much the same gosh darn thing, but I find it easier just to twist it down like that. So once you decock it like that, uh, the uh, front bolt head and bolt carrier should come right off the bolt. At that point, you'll see that the uh, firing pin is, is protruding there out, out the front of the bolt assembly. Uh, what you can do is remove the bolt head, obviously. We'll just take the bolt head right off here. Uh, that you can set aside. Um, the... Uh, firing pin we can remove a couple different ways. Um, you'll notice in the back here on the back of the um, the cocking knob there is a line through the firing pin that they have and then there is a line cut into the uh, actual knob of the cocking handle. Those should line up. That tells you if your firing protrusion is lined up or, or uh, the firing protrusion is correct or not. Uh, you do want to make note of that obviously if you know anything about firing protrusion that's a pretty important thing if you don't want to get gases blowing back in your face or um, an over penetrated primer I guess or whatever happens there so I uh, just make sure that lines up I guess is the important thing uh, the what you want to do from this point is get that firing pin out of there you can do it a couple different ways you can use this teardrop tool that it comes with 
and actually use the largest notch in there and just twist this uh, counterclockwise to uh, slowly unscrew it out. Uh, as, you, as you do that, just make sure that when you get to the very end that you're holding it a little bit because it is under spring tension. Uh, when you do that, that, it will pop out a little bit at you. Another way to remove that if you don't have your teardrop tool is to just take a block of wood or something like that. Um, you can actually put your firing pin, uh, push it down into the wood using your bolt handle. As you push it into the wood, the whole cocking uh, or the bolt assembly should come down uh, and it should allow you to be able to twist the cocking knob in a counterclockwise direction off the entire bolt assembly and ultimately firing pin. When you release this, be careful that you're releasing it nice and easy as uh, again it's under uh, spring tension. But at that point you should be able to remove your, your um, firing pin and your spring. To get it back together it's kind of the same thing, the opposite direction. We'll just go ahead and push this back on in the wood. We'll screw this back into position. You really have to push down hard to get this thing to be able to get all the way up to where it needs to go. And then uh, just go ahead and release it like that. At that point then what we'll go ahead and do is put our uh, things back together here. And you just kind of got to play around with the parts a little bit to make sure that they go back together correctly. I mean, just finagle them a little bit however you got to do it. Uh, to see, make sure that they get back. You do want to make sure that your firing pin here is lined up. As you can see, my firing pin is not lined up here. You got to make sure that is lined up prior to putting on that front bolt assembly. Let's go ahead and line it up like that, as you can see. I'll go ahead and slide this on. Uh, we want to make sure all the pieces fit together nicely here, like that. That looks good. Everything looks like it's together. At that point, I should be able to pull forward on the bolt and twist my cocking handle uh, to the right again, which locks it into its assembled position. Everything should be tight on there, nothing should be loose, and that's it. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. All right, everyone, so we're going to get into just kind of um, some of the markings that you'll find on some of these Mosin Nagans, and especially in particular the Model 44. One thing I do want to make note of is there's a lot of good resources out there. Uh, if you go to 7.62 by 54r.net, uh, just a wealth of information on Mosines. Uh, they actually do provide you a form that you can fill out for each of them if you have multiple Mosines that will help you in identifying it. So uh, it's good just to have something like this on file where you're able to uh, know the information if you're going to sell your gun or just you know keep your own guns kind of straight. Uh, a lot of these um, guns have been remanufactured, rearsenaled, refurbished. So. Uh, there's a lot of different markings on them and uh, never, there's, I don't think there's any one gun that's probably going to be the same, to tell you the truth. It also comes with a uh, sheet where you're able to kind of write down some of the markings that you find on your gun, which is a really nice way of uh, easily going out there and doing the research on the markings without having to you know, constantly pull apart your gun or look at your gun and seeing what, what's on it. So, uh, Just a couple things I, I thought I would mention uh, before we get started. I guess the first thing we'll do is we'll take a look at some of the main markings that you'll find on the gun uh, or initially as you look at it. Uh, the main one that you always kind of want to look for is obviously on the top of the receiver. Um, there's always going to be a stamp here and it's always going to generally, and this is going to be difficult for you guys to see obviously with um, the amount of light and being on a video camera, but there should always be some sort of crest or stamp on the top here identifying um, generally what country or, you know, or what arsenal it's from. This one has a crest, uh, two fern leaves or whatever it is, and in the middle of it it's got a P and an R and an R. Uh, that is a Romanian crest. Underneath that you have the date that it was manufactured, so in this case 1955, which was the last date uh, that the Model 44 was produced in Romania. And then underneath that you should have your model number, in this case it says EC2079. Uh, and then under that I do have a Romanian triangle, uh, which is also the symbol for CUGIR, that manufacturer, Kugir, or however you want to say it. So that's going to be kind of your main stamps that you're going to look for. That will give you a lot of the main identification as far as where it came from, when it was made, and who made it. Uh, you should also find um, uh, on the left-hand side, if it was imported, generally the uh, importer will stamp the uh, serial number in it one more time. Uh, I'm not sure if you're able to see that, but it does have the stamp there, EC2079. 
Uh, if you are able to pull the gun apart, you're able to kind of tell on the back here, on the, what they call the tang, uh, there should be a stamp there as well. And uh, this stamp here has the date, it should generally be the date, 1955, uh, and then the Romanian triangle on it again. Uh, I know a lot of this is going to be difficult for you to see. But that generally should match up with the receiver stamps on the uh, top of the gun. Uh, and, uh, some common ones that you'll find, some common marks, uh, and these are going to be really difficult for you to see because they're so small, but uh, along the bottom or the right hand side of the receiver, and sometimes this can be covered by the wood, you'll find a K in a circle. Uh, generally that's going to mean um, a proof mark uh, on a point of aim. So someone actually held this on a target shot, it hit the, the point of aim and they marked it. Uh, another one that you'll find um, is the concentric zero zero. Uh, or a double O and it's inside of each other uh, and that's also an accuracy proof uh, supposedly uh, and you'll find those on the barrel as well. I'll go ahead and flip my sheet over. Uh, a lot of times what you'll find then moving on um, on the stock, on the Romanian stocks at least, on the top of the butt stock you'll find the serial number and you'll also find the stamp of the manufacturer, in this case is a triangle with a C, that's uh, also a Romanian uh, type um, uh, stamp that you'll find. There are a lot of variations with this gun. This particular gun has a um, round receiver instead of the hex receiver and it has a low wall receiver. Those are some of the variations that you'll find. Um, if you go to 7.62 by 54 net you can actually um, find the specific receiver variation that your gun is. It's actually really neat, the different kinds of uh, receiver variations they have and how well they plotted those out and you're able to kind of pinpoint your specific receiver variation. A lot of times you can do it just by the arsenal and the years that it was manufactured and they'll tell you exactly every variation that is done with your gun. Uh, another variation that this particular gun has is that the um, through magazine screw hole goes all the way through. You can actually see the barrel threads down there and you're not going to be able to see it on the video. A lot of times you'll find that's uh, filled. It does have the unstepped tang back here. Uh, sometimes you'll find that they are stepped up. Um, inside the gun you'll find in the earlier models that there is no stripper um, guides. And I'll kind of see if I can get this actually a, a picture of this for you inside the receiver here there is an extra little bar right there that uh, is a stripper clip guide. A lot of the earlier guns do not have that. Uh, when you're looking at it the rear part of the receiver here this one is an unmachined or I'm sorry a machined right receiver if it's kind of flattened out on the right hand side here that's an unmachined and then you can also find semi-machined uh, receivers. I think generally the later guns you're going to find the uh, a machined receiver just like this one where it's uh, pretty pretty similar on both sides. Uh, there are some things on the inside of the, the barrel that you can look for such as the inner receiver ring uh, which this one does not have and the lug race um, if it's cut through or not in there and this one is cut through. Those are difficult to see and not the biggest or most difficult variations to find. Um, the sights will always kind of tell if your gun has been through refurbishment or if it's an older gun that's cut down. This one has the shorter type style leaf spring. If it's got a long one, most likely it was a 9130 that was cut down. Uh, you're probably looking at a Soviet uh, M44, perhaps uh, one similar to that. But this one was made in Romania, so they actually had the uh, sights that were appropriate for this gun, which were the short style. Uh, it also has the kind of the straight edge going down. You don't have the, the wavy curve type to it. Uh, the sights, the front sights can be a little bit uh, different depending on the year of the manufacturer. This one is actually a globe sight as you can see. Some of the earlier variations it was flat along here for a number of years where they, they soldered it in so you'll find a flat along the bottom. Um, and then uh, the actual diameter of the, the sight here was a lot smaller on some of the, the uh, earlier guns so it didn't protrude off the sides of the barrel as much. Uh, so those are some of the variations you'll find on some of the front sights. Uh, the stock here, if you look, uh, there are different uh, ways that you can tell how old your stock is or what type of variation it is. And usually it comes down to these actual 
um, sling echelons in here, whatever they call them, the covers here. Uh, that really kind of determines what point of time your gun was made. Uh, if there are none or there are just real minimal ones in here that maybe cover just the bottom portion, you're looking at a, a wartime rifle. Um, if it's laminate, it's going to be after post-war, uh, World War II. If it's um, hardwood and it's got the metal, you're probably looking at a, a pre-World War II um, or pre-war uh, type gun where they actually had the time and materials to be able to, to do that. Uh, so there are a number of ways to identify uh, what particular type of gun that you have, or uh, stock, I should say, that you have. Look for um, crest marks on the right and left-hand side of the, of the uh, stock. Those are real nice to find um, if you are able to do that. This particular stock doesn't have those. Sometimes they were sanded down so far that those were actually sanded right off. One thing to also look for is the barrel bands, although that's not a huge deal. The barrel bands can also tell you kind of the dates uh, of when they were. A lot of these are re-arsenals, so you'll find different barrel bands, different manufacturers. Barrel bands generally do have the stamp on here, like you're not going to be able to see here, but there is a triangle with an arrow in it, which means Romania again. Um, and then uh, this is a what they call a split barrel band, where it's just uh, notched right down and kind of pushed together. Uh, you'll also find button ones and you'll find solid ones. Uh, one thing I should mention about the triangle with the arrow in it, be very careful that you're not misidentifying it. There is a uh, Soviet manufacturer or arsenal called um, Ivizhik or something like that. It's spelled I-V-Z-H, something like that. It goes on. It's one of the uh, brother arsenals to Tula. Uh, their ar arsenal stamp is actually a triangle with an arrow in it, um, uh, an actual arrow, bow and arrow, arrow, uh, not a just a, an arrow up. Arrow. So those can be a little bit uh, confusing if you're not really uh, familiar with that or if you're looking at it real, um, not real closely. Uh, there was different variations to the bayonet. Generally the bayonet was just going to be uh, the way that it notched in here so um, I'm not going to explain that but this is a later type bayonet notch or feed system. Um, on the stock itself, you'll find numerous markings. A lot of them are just going to be proof marks, refurbishment marks. You're not going to be able to tell what those are. If it is a Romanian stock, generally you're going to have a Romanian crest, triangle, or, uh, which is kind of unusual, just a circled six on the top here, which is a known Romanian symbol. No idea what it means. It's just a, a common one that they used. you also find the triangles on the top as well. Um, but again, there are a number of different... Um, markings that you'll find on these guns and in, inside here actually there's a whole bunch of them which probably was um, who knows maybe refurbishment marks or proof marks who knows so uh, but those are some of the markings that you'll find on this gun generally each piece will have uh, you know especially on the bolt will have a stamp uh, which will tell you the arsenal that it was made at and a lot of times you'll find that different uh, pieces on the bolt actually came from different arsenals that's not uncommon uh, as these guns had seen a lot of war, and uh, a lot of them had been shipped back to the, the arsenals to be uh, refurbished. Uh, but essentially, your, um, your receiver, your floor plate, your bolt, and your butt plate on your gun should all match. If they don't, not a huge deal. There are different ways that it can match. It can be force matched. It can be uh, striked out. The old number can be striked out and re-stamped. That's, I think, generally what they call a force match. Um, it can be electro penciled in, um, which means an old number was actually sanded off and they didn't have the time to actually stamp it, they just electro penciled it. Um, though it can match that way as well. Obviously in those circumstances, those have all been refurbished and uh, made to suit that purpose and, and uh, re-stamped to match, saying that this was refurbished and this part goes with this gun now. Um, generally you'll be able to find or tell if it's original um, matching numbers, if the uh, numbers have the preceding letters by it. Um, so for instance, this is original butt plate, uh, or I should say magazine plate, um, mainly because it's got the EC in front of it. A lot of times if this was restamped to force match, they'll leave that EC off and just put the 2079. So that's kind of a, a, a way to identify if uh, you're actually getting a, a real matching uh, piece to this gun or not. That's pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, there's a lot of great information out there. These are a real uh, cool set of guns to collect. They're cheap. They're easy to find. Um, and they have a lot of history with them. 
So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed. Hope this helps you out. And take it easy. Thanks.